What is up guys, Evil Duo Time, your favorite e-boy here, back with another Blade and Soul video. Today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the upcoming Thanksgiving event, the Golden Harvest Festival, that is coming to Blade and Soul on November 13th, so in about a week. So this year, the Golden Harvest Festival is completely different from last year, so that's pretty cool. They definitely heard from the community feedback and are doing something a little bit different this time around. Real quick, before we get into it, if you're new to the channel, new to Blade and Soul, or enjoying the content on the channel, please consider subscribing. It means a lot to me, helps to grow the channel, and I really want to push for that 20k number. It would mean a lot to me. At any rate, without further ado, let's get into it and let's take a look at the event. So, running from November 13th through December 11th, 28 days, the typical cycle for any event that comes to Blade and Soul, the last, like, seven, eight months, they've all been 28 days, which means you have four weeks to be able to run the event. The event this time is centered around Mushin's Tower, floors one through eight. So if you don't know where floors one through eight are, they're located in Mushin's Hall. So to get to Mushin's Hall, it's on the keyboard, press M. Literally, Mushin's Hall has its own area. Should have a fast travel location. To get here, you need to be like level 45-ish, but you're not going to be able to run this event anyway because we'll get into it in a second. But anyway, floors one through eight are the very first door right here. This is floors one through eight. But anyway, completion of floor eight on Mushin's Tower, completing the dungeon or the boss Mushin's Darkness of floor eight is going to give you a festive feast bag. So the Festive Feast bag, you open it and has all the different items you see right here up until this point guaranteed. So you're going to get a Harvest Dinner, which is our event currency, and we'll touch on that in a second. Roast Turkey, Strawberry Shortcake, Homemade Cookie. Those three items are all used as raid buffs. So if you're in like Temple of Alluvium and you want to get some bonus damage, you would use one of those buffs. They're similar to the other types of food raid buffs that we get. You can only have one active at any given time. Then you get one Golden Nebula Stone, which is used to upgrade your Talisman. So that's another item in this event that we're getting. And then you get Soulstone Crystals, Moonstone Crystals, Sacred Crystals, and Elysian Crystals. So all in all, some really cool rewards, especially this Golden Nebula Stone. Definitely something that a lot of people are going to use because the cost to upgrade your Talisman is outrageous. But we'll touch on that in a second. We're going to get to the Harvest Dinners first. So the Harvest Dinner is the event currency this time around. As we've just said, you get three of them for completing Mushin's Darkness. You also get four for completing the Fallen Around to School and Snow Jade Fortress. Or two for completing Hall of the Cap Keeper and Hall of the Templar. So all in all, if you do the festive feast bag reward boss thing by completing Mushin's Darkness one time per day and complete your weekly mini raids as well, you're going to have available to you 132 of these harvest dinners over the course of the event. Add to that the ones you're going to get from your daily login right here. An additional 28 as a free-to-play player, as a premium, I have no idea how many they're going to give us this time around. But that takes you up to 160 harvest dinners available for completing the festive feast bag reward quest once per day. So now... This festive feast bag reward thing might be farmable, since it says it's awarded for defeating Mushin's Darkness, which is one of the bosses there, not the daily challenge quest, it's actual boss, so you could farm the boss. You might be able to pick up a lot more of these harvest dinners than would originally be led on to believe here. Now, the reason I can think that this is also true is because in order to open this festive feast bag, you need to complete one of these daily challenge dungeons right here, which gives you a harvest key. So the harvest key opens up the festive feast bag that gives you the harvest dinners. It looks like you can farm this as many times as you want, but you're limited to two keys per day. So if you go ahead and do this twice per day, go ahead and use both of your keys that you get from completing these dungeons, you can actually get up to 244 of the event currency from this event, which is actually a lot, especially compared to how low the prices are for the different items on this event. So this is actually a really solid event for progressing, as long as you want to run these Mushin Tower multiple times, as well as the daily challenge that corresponds in order to get the harvest keys to open up the Mushin's Tower bag. So that might be confusing. Let me give you the TLDR version here. Do your weekly raid thing every single day, complete Mushin's Tower twice per day, floors one through eight, and then complete whichever daily challenge dungeon is on the rotation to get keys in order to open up the Mushin's Tower bag. It's really that simple, and you will get 244 of the event currency. Now, to go along with the fact that this is old content, Mushin's Tower floor 1 through 8 is literally, like, years old, and this is super easy and super simple, like, you can just go in and one-shot these bosses, they are upping the difficulty of this, and they haven't said how much they're upping the difficulty. So we'll find out on patch day or if they give some more information. And if they do, I'll make sure to let you know. But do know that this is not going to be a walk in the park that you can just show up and do. But want to make sure that everyone's aware of that. Now, what can we do with these harvest dinners? So the items that we can purchase with harvest dinners include this costume item right here. Admiral's new clothes. Obviously, we've had in all of these. Let's you pick up some different outfits. We also have sacred vials, pet packs. Golden Nebula Stones, if you want to pick those up. Skybreak accessories, Sandstorm bracelets, a whole bunch of different accessories, really tons of options. You can get your VT Soul Shield set if you're a new player from this. Awesome item there to pick up. Really just a ton of different awesome items that you can go for in this. I honestly can't even pick out one item that's best for all here, especially because we have the Talisman upgrading system. So the Talisman is one of the most expensive things to upgrade, and we have this new event, the Golden Nebula Stone. 
So periodically, Blade and Soul comes out with Nebula Stone events that lets you upgrade various equipment. This time around, it is for the Talisman. So they're going to reduce the cost of the Talisman. It doesn't say by how much, whether it's half or whatever, but it is a reduction in the overall cost of it. So if you've been waiting to upgrade your Talisman, now would be a good time to do it. The next portion of this event is really quick. Cold Drake's Lair, if you've run Cold Drake's Lair before, you're going to get double rewards during this period from November 13th through December 11th. So over the 28 day period, you're going to get double rewards from Cold Drake's Lair. Really cool if you're trying to pick up a Garnet for your character, something like that. The final thing is a new store item called Hongsil's Treasure Draw. You're going to buy some keys off of the marketplace that let you go ahead and roll different numbers for different rewards. No idea how this is going to work, but I will put a video out when the system goes live so I can explain it to you because I'm all about that low, cheap, and easy content to make for my channel. Anyway, guys, I hope you found this video useful. I hope it helps to explain what's going on with this patch update. If it did help you, let me know in the comment section. Leave a like. If it didn't help you, call me an idiot in the comment section. I don't really care. At any rate, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you at the next stream, video, or wherever I happen to see you. Peace.